In this video, we'll look at some of the mechanics of doing a t-test. And I'm going to start out here in the statistical tests uh, XLS X file. And if I look here at one sample t, that's the one we'll look at first, one sample t, I'll notice that it's a test of means that it assumes that uh, we're dealing with variable data. The sample size is less than 30. We do not know the population standard deviation, which is common. The data is normally distributed, and of course we have one sample. So let's go over to the one sample t. And the mechanics of it are, of course, you lay in your values here in the yellow colored cells. Up here, we want to construct our uh, hypothesis statements. And in this case, I'm going to make uh, the statement that the mean uh, of the population is equal to 18 minutes. And the alternate statement is that, in fact, it's less than 18 minutes. So that's a less than uh, type test, uh, which creates a one tail test. The next thing I want to do is select the confidence level for my test, and remember the alpha is the complement of it, so in this case it's uh, 95 or 0.95, 1 minus 0.95, which is 0.05. X-bar, of course, is the sample of the data we just put in uh, over on the left-hand side here. Uh, mu is the, um, is the, uh, uh, the uh, target, or the, in this case it's the population mean that I'm testing against. And then some other values here that are not in the yellow cells are all calculated, so that's the sample standard deviation, the number of values I have, the degrees of freedom, and so forth. Then I get down here and I've got a calculated value for the t-statistic, and I've got a critical value of 1.7. So if I go over to a t-table, I'm looking for 95% uh, confidence level at, uh, t at 20, with 29 degrees freedom, I should see a value of about 1.7. So here I am in the t-table and I look at 95% uh, confidence and 29 degrees of freedom, so I'll come down and there we see our value of 1.699 rounded up to 1.7, so that's the value then that, that you'll see here. Although in this particular spreadsheet, of course, it's, it's calculated. And then because my, uh, or when my uh, calculated T statistic is greater than my critical, I reject the null. In this case, it's not, so I fail to reject the null. Alternatively, so that's one method of, of drawing your conclusion. Uh, the other method, of course, is using the p-value, and so the alternate method is over here. It says, you know, alternately, the answer here is in blue, so it's a one-tail test. The p-value is uh, 0.107, which is greater than my alpha. Remember, when the p is uh, low, then the uh, null uh, gets rejected. Uh, but in this case, the p is not greater than the alpha. Uh, sorry, it's not, uh, um, uh, it's not smaller than the alpha. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So that's really the mechanics of uh, a one-sample uh, t-test. Now, similarly, we'll go over to the two-sample t. It's very similar, but in this case, we have two samples, so I might have group A as my sample or, uh, and then group B, and I lay those values in here. I construct my hypothesis statement. In this case, there's no difference between the means or there is a difference between the means. Um, I'm assuming that I'm only interested in whether or not they're the same, so let's uh, assume that my alternate is there's no difference, or in other words, they're not equal. I don't really care in this case whether it's greater than or less than. Yeah, that makes it a two-tailed test, and then if I wanted to um, construct a confidence uh, 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 interval around that, I would use a confidence level of 0 0.05. And I can also test for a difference in the means. In this case, I'm going to test for zero difference in the means. And then, just as we saw in the one sample uh, t-test, some other uh, statistics are calculated. My, uh, my uh, t, t uh, calc is uh, calculated. The critical, of course, comes from the table of those calculated here. And in this particular case, we reject the null. Now, what did the, what did the null say? The null said there is no difference, and we're going to reject that. So we accept the alternate, which is there is a difference. So in these two samples, they do come from different populations. And then, of course, over here, uh, alternatively, it's a two-tailed test. You can see the p-value is actually lower than alpha, lower. Uh, so when the p is low, then the, uh, the HO or the null gets rejected, so we're going to reject the null. The final one we'll look at then is the paired t-test. Now the paired t-test is very, very similar to the two-sample t, except that as we are exposing the uh, subjects of the, um, uh, of this, or the samples, uh, uh, we, are, we have to make sure that they're paired up. So under condition one, 
say this is my sample sat one under condition one my sample one uh, produces a value of 128 and in um, in uh, condition number two my sample uh, one is 135 so in fact I'm keeping track of the difference for a given data point the difference uh, of condition one versus condition two so that's why we call them paired okay so the order is important and then like the two sample t it's uh, it's very similar I'll construct my null hypothesis and my alt and my alternate and uh, whether or not I'm testing for a less than a greater than or an equal to and that determines whether it's a one tail test I select my confidence level and the test difference if there's a test difference of interest and then the spreadsheet will calculate the rest for you in this particular case we have a, a one tail test and because the p is actually quite a bit higher than the alpha we fail to reject the null hypothesis so since we fail to reject the null we have to stay with the condition of the null and the null says there's no difference so in these two examples uh, or sorry in these two samples uh, what it says is under uh, the values produced under condition one really and uh, and condition two really have had no effect on the samples uh, or the sample pairs so that is uh, very very briefly the uh, t-test